In this video, we're going to look at practical ways that you can avoid the effects of one of the most common reasons for overfitting your trading strategy, events overfitting. These are techniques I use myself and are steps that you can build into your own optimization process. Welcome back, Martin here from the Alpha team at DarwinX. Overfitting is a major problem for anyone undertaking optimizations. It's one of those facts of life, there's no getting away from it, and unfortunately, the effects of it can't be removed completely. However, there are some practical steps that we can take that will reduce the damaging effects of it significantly. And that's what I'm going to be covering today. So if that sounds good, then stay tuned. Now in the last video, we looked at three techniques for increasing the sample size or the number of trades that your system executes, which in turn increases the statistical significance of your optimization results. And this in part has a major influence on reducing the effects of overfitting. So that's great, but there's a lot more we also need to do. This week, technique four looks specifically at how to reduce the effects of events overfitting. Firstly, let's briefly remind ourselves about what this is. It's when a number of trades for a particular set of parameter values are affected by some event in the market. Now, of course, I do realise that some of you will have developed strategies that actively trade the news, which is of course fine. But here I'm talking about the detrimental effect of news on non-news based strategies. Last time I used the example of NFP. So if you optimise over let's say an eight year period, then you've got 96 NFPs that will potentially affect trades either positively or negatively. And these large losing or winning trades can skew your results significantly. This is something that's not predictably repeatable in the future and it's therefore detrimental to our selection of parameters that we'll use from the optimization process. So I call this events overfitting. You could equally call it economic news overfitting. Now it will of course help us if we can measure or quantify the degree to which overfitting has affected a particular set of parameter values. So let me show you how I do that. On the left here, we have a chart that shows all of the trades that were executed by one particular set of parameters. Above the x-axis we've got the winning trades and below the x-axis we have the losing trades. And you'll notice that the majority of trades occupy this band across the middle here. But hopefully if it's a good system then you'll have more trades above the y-axis than you will below. Now notice how I'm displaying the the size of the trade here, so the profit or the loss, as a percentage of equity at the time of the trade. This is because I scale my position size relative to equity. So scaling back down here by using a percentage means that trades with larger position sizes don't get disproportionately represented on the chart. Now the charts across the centre in this cluster are those that are represented by normal price action and normal system performance in the market. But you'll notice there's a number of outliers. Some negative and some positive. And these are due to trades that were open at a time when major market news was released and they caused disproportionately large winning or losing trades. Now you might have a stop loss or a take profit order in place, but the market can often move so rapidly during these events that they get slipped. And if you're like me, I hate to execute trades when the spread is 50 times the normal level. So I put in place code to avoid that happening. Now it's helpful if we visualize this a different way. So let's now display all of the trades in order of magnitude, as you can see on the right here. And also, for our purposes at this point, it also helps to use the absolute values. When we do this, we get a chart that looks like this. So these values on the left are from trades affected by big market moves. And the values down the tail of the slope are representing the normal operation of the trading strategy. 
Now for an overfitted strategy, the chart might look something like this one here, where we have a high proportion of trades that occupy normal behaviour, but then a few trades that are affected significantly by news. But if we look at what the chart for a non-over-optimised strategy look like, looks like, it's much more like this without the, the sharp spike at the left-hand side. So one way of measuring whether a set of parameter values has been affected by events overfitting or not is as follows. We take 1% of the trades from the left-hand side of this chart. So if this axis represents, say, 1,000 trades, then we're going to look at the 10 biggest trades in this 1% section. We then calculate the average size of those 10 trades and compare to the average size of all trades. And this gives me what's called the overfitting score. So the overfitting score due to events can be calculated as the, the sum of the absolute magnitude of the profit or loss of each individual trade from the first trade over here on the left hand side to n over 100 which represents the first uh, one percent of trades and then of course we're looking at an average here so we're going to divide this by n over 100. So this gives us the the trades that are in the top section here and potentially um, affected by, by news events. And then we divide that by the sum of all trades. So this time we're going from one all the way up to uh, the number of trades in the system of the absolute magnitude of the profit or loss. And this time we're just dividing by the total number of trades. Now this equation then simplifies down to give us this. And so this is what we can use to calculate our overfitting score. It's simply the sum of all of the magnitudes of the trades in the 1% divided by the sum of all the trades, and you multiply that by 100. The 100, of course, comes from the fact that we're looking at 1%. If you decide to change this and maybe look at the top 2% of trades, then this would be 50 in that particular case. If it was 4% of trades, it would be 25 and so on. Now, I know from experience that generally an overfitted score below about 12 for my systems means that it's not being affected adversely by events overfitting. Anything above that, and when you look closer, you can start to see disproportionately large trades. And when you trace those back, you find out that they're mainly caused by large market moves because of news. Now, the guidance on this value that I use of 12 will differ for different types of systems because different systems will produce different trade size distribution curves. And it will also be affected by the percentage of time that your system's in the market. So if your system only has one five minute trade per day on average, this will be affected much less by uh, events overfitting than a system that's in the market for 50% of the time. And this will also change the level that you'll need to use. But as I say, for, the, for a level of 12, this tends to be a really good cutoff point for my systems. So let's now look at a couple of simple examples from optimizations that I've performed. In this case, they're a single instrument. However, in reality, there would be a lot more trades. Down the left, you can see a list of trades for one particular set of parameter values. And these have been ordered by absolute magnitude. So at the top, you can see five or six trades that have much larger sizes than the others. And these are trades that were affected by news. Over on the right, we can see this represented on the chart. The calculation of the event's overfitting score is done above the chart, and it's highlighted in red. It comes in at just a little over 20, which classifies it as overfitted. This effectively means that the 1% of trades are 20 times bigger on average 
than the overall average size of the trade in the optimization. Now let's switch over and look at the trades for a set of parameter values that were not affected by news events. Here, we can see in the green highlighted cell that this has a value less than 10, and so it's classified as not overfitted. Now, when we look at each of the charts on their own, they look fairly similar, but that's just because they have different scales on the y-axis. As soon as we overlay them, we can see the difference. So the blue line here is the overfitted example, and the orange line is the non-overfitted example. So we now have a way of quantifying events overfitting, but what can we do about it? Well, actually, we have a number of options. Click on this link to part 5.2, and I'll look at each of these in turn.